Assalamu alaikum everyone. So this is the third part of the second lecture. Um, in the first part we talked about gel electrophoresis. Um, then um, in the second part uh, I described the concept of denaturation and hybridization as well. Uh, and I talked about a technique known as dot blot. Now in this part I'll be talking about southern blotting which is another hybridization based technique and uh, I've added another topic uh, that is related and relevant to all of this it's known as restriction oh, well it's basically um, uh, the use of restriction endonucleases uh, in medicine so remember how I told you to watch uh, the animation video uh, in this uh, website uh, it's really important that you do uh, at the end of this lecture uh, to grasp everything that we've talked about. So let's start with southern blotting. Uh, southern uh, comes from the name of the inventor of this technique. And a blotting, well in, in Arabic a blot is a stain. Uh, okay, in Arabic latcha, okay, or يعني زي الوسخ. Uh, so southern blotting is basically a technique by which you do see sort of like a stain on a piece of paper that I uh, talked about before uh, known as the membrane. Okay, So this technique, southern blotting, is a technique that is a combination of two things, uh, DNA gel electrophoresis and uh, the hybridization based technique known the, the, that I talked about that is dot blotting. The purpose of southern blotting is to detect if there is a DNA segment or fragment that contains a sequence that is complementary to a probe. Well just like dot blotting. But the addition of gel electrophoresis to the technique uh, enables us to know also the size of this DNA fragment. Okay, so the idea here is that let's say we have um, we have a, a DNA large DNA uh, molecule. Let's say a whole genome. A genome is basically the total collection of DNA in a cell. Okay, so let's say that we have this uh, chromosome large DNA and we fragment this DNA using enzymes and I'll talk about these restriction endonucleases later on. So we fragment this DNA into smaller fragments. Now remember that I have many many copies of this DNA and as a result when it is fragmented I'm gonna have many many more of the smaller DNA fragments. I take these DNA fragments and I separate them according to size in a gel, in an agarose gel. Okay, so this is after separation of the DNA fragments. Notice here I have four lanes for four different samples. Now notice that these are the wells in here. So that's a representation of the well. Okay, and these are the large DNA fragments that move slowly, and these are the smaller DNA fragments that move uh, quickly through the gel. Now, so far we've talked about all this before. Now, what's new is that we take the DNA fragments in the gel and we transfer them to a membrane. Okay, so this is how. Uh, this is how they're transferred. So they're transferred to a membrane. Okay, and the membrane lays in here. That's the gel right there. Okay, so this is the membrane after the DNA fragments are transferred. Now notice something. That the DNA fragments or the, the DNA fragments are transferred to the membrane at the same exact position as they appear in the gel. So the membrane looks like a replica it looks like a mirror image, a mirror image of the gel. So right here you have this sample in here and notice how the DNA fragments look exactly the same at the same exact position. 
So we take this membrane, we place it in a bag, and we add probe molecules to the, uh, to the membrane. Now there are many, many of these probe molecules of the same exact type, and they keep on swimming inside the bag until they find a DNA fragment on the membrane that is complementary to it. Okay, so we have now in, in here to the left, there are many DNA fragments in the membrane and you have this probe that is bound to that DNA fragment because it contains a sequence that is complementary to it. Remember that the probe is labeled, right? So meaning that it gives a signal. So this position right here would emits, would transfers, would, would uh, gives a signal. The signal can be detected, since we're using radioactivity, can be detected by placing an X-ray film on top of the membrane, and the radioactivity would hit the, membra the, the X-ray film at certain positions where the bands are bound to the probe. So right here we have this sample right here. There are two fragments, or you can see two bands representing two DNA fragments. Now, the information that we know is, one, that in this sample there are two DNA fragments that are complementary to the probe. That's one. Two, we know what the sizes of the DNA fragments are because we know where they are positioned on the X-ray film, which represents where they are pos the positioned in the membrane, which represents where they are uh, positioned in the gel itself, okay? That's one. Now, you compare uh, lanes one and two, for example, and you would notice that uh, this sample contains two DNA fragments. The other sample contains two DNA fragments as well, okay? But the sizes are different. The sample contains only one fragment that has a low molecular weight, or let's say, uh, it's a uh, it's short relative to the other samples except for this band right here or this DNA fragment okay now you look at the sample right here there are two bands that are uh, high molecular weight large DNA fragments and they are large but they are still different there is a difference in size between them but relative to the other samples they are quite large. So this is really southern blotting, okay? So right here, let's say I have two samples, one and two, from two individuals. Now, we as human beings, we are similar in our DNA sequence or in our DNA overall by 99.99%. .99%. So we are different by 0.01%. Now these differences can be um, can be observed using southern blotting. So if we fragment our, uh, let's say that we take two human beings and we take their DNA and we fragment these uh, uh, their DNA using uh, enzymes, um, they would uh, generate the same pattern. But there are differences. Now, using electrophoresis, we wouldn't really be able to see these differences because there would be a lot of bands, a lot of DNA fragments of different sizes. We wouldn't be able to see that. Okay, but here you can see the differences, you know, just to illustrate that these are the two uh, DNA fragments that are different. But if we transfer these DNA fragments to a membrane and we add a probe, and the probe is complementary to a certain sequence, the probe would bind to this DNA fragment and to that DNA fragment. And that sort of like, it, it tells us that these two individuals are really different. They have different DNA um, uh, sequences or DNA fragments. So by southern blotting, we know that these two individuals have DNA fragments that contain a certain sequence that is complementary to a probe. We know what the sequence of the probe is and we know what the sizes of the DNA fragments are.